Okay, question number four. Going to Southland. So we're going to go to the country of Southland, and they have an unemployment rate that's greater than the natural unemployment rate. So what does that equal? A recession. So this is my fourth video that I'm filming on a Friday evening for my students. And um, it may get a little silly, so I'm just going to warn you. Uh, it's been a long week. And um, week after Thanksgiving, it's very difficult to recover. Uh, okay, my friends. So now we have to, we got to uh, put this on a aggregate demand, aggregate supply graph. Uh, this is kind of an old question. And um, this question doesn't even show us uh, or, or specify to put the long run aggregate supply. But in order to do the current equilibrium and to show the recession, it's sort of assumed that you would put the long run aggregate supply. And I have a little suspicion that the college board, you know, when they're grading these kids were not putting the long run. And you could probably argue that they still should get the point because it doesn't say to put the long run. So, you know, if we go back up to questions that we've done before, they're much more specific with saying you know, label the long run. So, um, you know, I just want to put that out there for you all as you do this question. So I already made this graph and I'm going to bounce down to another screen, but, um, uh, to show you that. So let's go to it. So on the left, I have the graph that we should make. So remember, if we want to show a recession, we've got to show that equilibrium point on the inside or the put the long run on the right of the short run equilibrium point. So remember on the right equals recession and I labeled PLC and YC as they specified. And I'm just going to delete my little circles so we can work with this graph in a little while. All right, fabulous. So now, President of Southland is receiving advice from two economic advisors, like most presidents do, and uh, sensible. He wants to talk to people, think what should we do to alleviate this recession. And the two people he's got helping him out are uh, Coelis and Raymond about the best way to reduce unemployment in Southland. So let's hear about Coelis's plan. <coughs> Excuse me. Coelis advises the president to decrease personal income taxes. So, you know, this makes sense. You decrease taxes, you're going to increase the amount of disposable income have. And how is that going to affect aggregate demand? Well, it's going to increase aggregate demand. And the explanation is because uh, lower taxes leads to more disposable income. And I'm going to write out just a few abbreviations, but I would encourage you to write a full sentence, which will increase consumption. And, you know, just walking someone through the thought process of if we have lower taxes, then there's going to be less disposable, I mean, more disposable income, and people will spend more money. Simple as that. So now I'm just going to erase this so we're not so clouded with text. Um, now we have to show this on the Phillips curve. And I think it's important for us to be really cognizant of what the questions are asking us. And we just have to do a short run Phillips curve. There's no requirement for long run here. And it says show the effect of the decrease of taxes. Label the initial equilibrium from part A up here as point A and the new one as point B. So if I go back to the graphs that I made, I have already done this. And I've got my inflation up here, my unemployment down here, my short run Phillips curve, and then I showed point A to B. Now, let's go back to the thought process and how to get there. So the decrease in income taxes would have shifted the aggregate demand line to the right. So remember the rules of the Phillips curve. How do I show that over here? Um, remember, an aggregate demand shift equals on the line, all right? Remember, I demand to be on the line. So if we shift the aggregate demand to the right, then the short run Phillips curve must move to the left. So we're going to move on the line to the left, and that's what we've done here with points A and B. Um, you might be wondering why I drew them on the graph where I did. Uh, ultimately, because there was no request for a long run in this graph, 
it didn't really matter where I put A. Um, in hindsight, as I look at this graph, I realize that my point A maybe is a little bit too much in the middle, and perhaps I should have put it down here somewhere, but it really doesn't matter because all we need to show is a leftward movement of point B. If I pull up the rubric, you can see that there are two points offered for this graph, putting a long run in the right place and PLC and YC. And then if I go to the Phillips curve, and I know some of you asked this in class about the shape of the Phillips curve, and you said, you know, can we make them straight lines instead of curved? And, you know, absolutely you can. You can see that here. Um, I just don't like to confuse it with the money demand of the money market graph. So this is why I do it the way that I do. So for this section, you are going to... Um, I wonder if I messed up with the points here. I just have a picture of it. They don't really have an explanation here. Okay. Oh no, that's the explanation. Short run aggregate supply curve would shift. I thought we were talking about aggregate demand. Yeah, aggregate demand. And then we've got the, the movement. I might have cropped off an answer on the rubric. But I showed you what the what the answers are anyway. All right, so now we have Mr. Raymond. Uh, and Raymond says, you know, let's take no policy action. And that's a really classical economist thing, no interaction of the government. What will happen to the short run aggregate supply curve? Well, let's go back to the picture that we made. All right, so I'm going to erase this red line. So if you look at this graph, price level is low and we're in a recession. And when we're in a recession and price level is lower than it really could be, people who are running businesses kind of benefit from this in a little bit by having lower costs of production. So what we can assume will happen with the short run aggregate supply because the input prices are lower than they would be if we were operating at full employment is that the short run aggregate supply line would shift to the right. Now, we did not have to graph that, but I think it was important just to visualize it. I like drawing the price level line and showing that it's lower and thinking, you know, what do I know about prices, uh, input prices, what do I know about productivity? And uh, we don't know anything about productivity. All we know is that uh, input prices are lower than they are in a uh, be than they should be in a recession. So the short run aggregate supply curve would shift to the right because input light prices are lower, which will enable businesses to produce more, hire more workers, so on and so forth. Uh, now we have to show a new correctly labeled graph with a short run Phillips curve and show the effect of the change in the short run aggregate supply. So let's just recall some of the things we talked about in class before we look at the answer. If the short run aggregate supply is what is shifting and it shifts to the right, what happens with the short run Phillips curve? Well, the short run Phillips curve experiences an entire shift to the left because they move in opposite directions and different than demand, where we demand to be on the line, like we did up here, the short run Phillips curve, the whole thing is going to move. So remember how I told you this was kind of an older question? They still have on this um, graph the previous answers from the other Phillips curve with A and B. And then they added the long run Phillips curve. And if we go back to the question, it doesn't say to have the long run there. So like I told you before, this is kind of an older question. So I feel like they're not doing the best job of explaining specifically what they want. So if you didn't draw the long run Phillips curve, like you see it on this rubric, don't freak out. Okay. <laughs> and also there was no A and B listed on here. So part of me thinks, well, were we just supposed to do it to the original one that we drew? But the question says, draw a new one. So if I were doing this answer on my piece of paper, uh, this is what it would look like. I would have 
short run Phillips curve here, unemployment rate, and inflation. And because the short run aggregate supply shifts to the right, I would shift this to the left. Oops. Now, the only thing that makes me realize that they want the long run Phillips curve here is because of what they wrote right here in the question of in the long run. So like I told you, I think the College Board has gotten better at wording their questions and they actually do want to see the long run because the short run aggregate supply would be shifting back to a long run equilibrium if the economy was left alone. Because isn't that what long run means? It means it's a self-correcting economy and we get back to, you know, a fully employed economy eventually. So if I were to reflect that on the graph that we just made, I would have to have a line going down here like this. Because if this is in the long run, it means that it needs to be on the line. We have to have the natural rate of unemployment being 5% if we're in the long run. You know, we have to be a fully employed economy. So, like, even though they didn't say do the long run Phillips curve and the short run in plain language the way that they did in previous questions, you have to sort of assume with this one that that's what they're looking for because of this phrase long run. But like I said, it's an old question. I want to say this question is like from 2006 or something. So it's understandable that in reflection since then, they have improved what they want from kids so that every student's answer is uh, similar. I also don't really love on this answer key how the arrow is pointing down for this, I think we need to really consider this being uh, shifting to the left. But in any event, um, I wanted to give you this question, not to frustrate you with their old question styles, but to practice some of the skills of the Phillips curve. So that's question number four with Southland.